How do I ensure my crampons are optimally fitted to my boots? Today we're talking about making sure our crampons fit as well as possible. Hi there, I'm Jason. We're now deep in the throes of winter, getting out on snow and ice, and that means crampons on our feet. And there are some finer points to consider when you are trying to make sure your crampons are fitting as well as possible. And a good, secure, and performant fit matters, whether you're ice climbing, traveling over glaciers, or just needing them for a spring hike on compacted snow. Today, we're going to talk about getting into crampons with three different types of attachments, making sure we can get the best fit possible with whatever type of crampon we're using. The first type of crampon attachment is with nylon straps to secure flexible plastic bales over both the toe and heel. We tune this crampon fit from back to front. First, we want to set the heel of our boot against the back heel post. Then we push the toe of the boot in between the posts on the toe of the crampon. It should fit tightly. If it's either too tight to fit in or so loose that the crampon won't stay connected to the boot without the straps cinched, you will want to adjust the length of the linking bar. Once the crampon will hold the boot, thread and adjust your straps. I find three tugs back and forth will usually do the trick to tighten. The second crampon type is the step-in crampon. These are simpler to get on once you have them sized for your boots, but there's a lot more to fine tune to get these crampons optimally fitted. Getting these adjusted is going to take some leverage, so I recommend having some pliers and work gloves to provide that leverage and to protect your hands. To fit these, we consider things from front to back, and the first element is the position of the toe bale. We want the toe of our boot to be as close to even with, or just slightly behind, the secondary points on our crampon. If the boot is too far forward, our boot toe may stop us from kicking deep enough to get the secondary points to engage if we're on vertical terrain. Now we need to adjust the linking bar so that either you get the heel of the boot to snug up against the back post, or for a different type of crampon, you get the step in the linking bar to sit snug to the heel break on the boot. And now we need to adjust the heel bail. You can choose the forward or rearward holes to ensure you get a tight, satisfying thunk when you snap the bail onto the heel welt of your boot. You can then micro adjust the tension in the back bail by moving the dial that is on the back bail. The final crampon type is a hybrid. This crampon has a flexible plastic toe bail with the step in heel bail. And so it is for a boot that has a heel welt, but no toe welt. With today's modular crampons, you can often change bail types from bar to flexible. If that's the case with your crampon, keep in mind that the step-in heel will push the boot forward when you latch it. So start with toe bail anchoring holes that keep the boot toes slightly behind the secondary points. From there, you follow the same procedure as you would with the full step-in crampons. If you cannot adjust the position of the toe bail, start by setting the heel as you would with the full strap crampons, adjust the linking bar to set the toe of the boot slightly behind the secondary points, and then proceed with the rest of the heel bail adjustments again, like the full step in crampons. So hopefully that helps you keep your crampons on your feet, as well as helps you perform on snow and ice at the peak of your abilities. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button, ring that bell, and subscribe, which is the way you can most easily help our channel. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. What are your favorite activities that require crampons? Let us know in the comments. Until next week, keep on getting more out of that big outside.